My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're Hi, everyone. From. My name is Mikhail Thorpe. Um, I host uh, the Expat Money Show, as well as the Director of Content and Marketing at Escape Artist, which is the largest and oldest offshore website in the world. Really? I didn't know that. That's good. That's good statistics to know. Okay. Let's dive into it. I know you, you're a big traveler. You've gone to many, many different countries. After doing 100, what, what can you tell us? I'm trying to hit my fifth <laughs> one. So I'm like 95 behind you. So I'm kind of trailing there. But damn, it's going to take me some time. Well, you know, I started traveling when I was a teenager. And, you know, I'll be 40. Not, not quite yet, but pretty soon. I've been, basically been traveling my entire adult life. And, you know, I can give you a couple of insights. Like, it's hard to summarize 20 years of continual travel around the world. But, um, yeah, I've been to, I think, 104, 105 countries, something like that, at last count. Um, I've circumnavigated the planet more than 400 times. I've lived overseas the entire time for 20 years straight um, and lived in eight different countries, including eight years in the Middle East. I was three years in Australia and a year in New Zealand, a year in Singapore, a year in the Arctic. Um, all over Canada and the United States, and now I'm based out of Panama. But um, see, let's see, what have I learned in 20 years of traveling? All right, I'll give you a listen, I don't want to put you on the spot. You could just tell me the most two interesting ones. I'm, I'm cool with that. That's a lot of. That's a lot of years. Yeah, like it's hard to summarize. But okay, I'll tell you a couple. All right, number one, people are all the same. I'll tell you that straight off the bat, and I don't care if you are. Tall, short, fat, skinny, male, female, young, old, gay, straight, tri transgender, whatever. People are the same. You know, we all want the same things out of life. We want a roof over our heads. We want a full belly. We want to protect our family, take care of our family. And we want to be loved. You know, I've been to North Korea, to Zimbabwe, to Iran, uh, El Salvador 20 years ago when they still had tons of problems. And I will tell you straight up. Everybody is the same. We want the same things. You know, this, this access of evil and, you know, it's just not the case. I traveled extensively through Iran and I met some of the most gorgeous human beings I've ever met. Like this, so generous and so respectful. You know, I remember this one time I was uh, in the bazaar, in the, in the market area. And I'd been living in Abu Dhabi for probably about three or four years at this point. And I'd traveled to Oman and to Bahrain and Egypt and a lot of other countries. And I saw this group of women who walked by. And, you know, normally when you go to, not normally, but a lot of times I've seen when you go to foreign countries, you know, the men will kind of stare or they'll uh, oogle them, you know, or some cat calls or something like that. In Iran, it was not like that at all. All the men took one step back they shut their mouths and they let the women pass in peace. There was no harassment, no nothing, you know? I traveled extensively through North Africa and that wasn't always the case. And, you know, Iran is a country of, um, they're Persians, they're not Arabs. So it's a very different country and different culture. And I think in a lot of times the media gets it completely wrong, you know? I had some amazing times all through the Middle East. And every place is a little bit different. And what's going on in the media and vilifying these countries and the people from there, it's disgusting. It's really disgusting behavior. It's the same type of thing when I went through Africa. Like I've traveled to Uganda and Kenya and um, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Botswana. You know, Africa has a really terrible reputation a lot of times. But oh my God, talk about the happiest people on planet Earth. You just walk up to anybody and you can start a conversation. And they'll have a huge smile on their face and telling jokes and laughing, you know. And I guess my point is, like I said earlier, that we're all the same. Really, it doesn't matter where you go. You know, it's not just Canada, the U.S., France, Great Britain, Australia, you know, Spain, Portugal. And, you know, we're the good countries and everyone else is, is bad. No, it's not the case at all. 100, 193 sovereign nations recognized by the United Nations. And every single one of them has their own culture, their own history, their own food, their own people, language, everything. You know, and you really need to get out there and explore and meet these people because often they have a lot to teach you. I agree with that 
I mean, I mean, I don't know if there are still people out there that believe what is displayed on news, but if it is, I mean, I understand that. But sometimes you got to go deeper. I mean, if you're re re really, really living 2020 on this planet and you got an internet connection, I think people need to do their own due diligence and research before they jump into conclusions. So I completely understand with that, with that philosophy that people are the same. We all want the same thing. But here's my other side of it. You traveling 100 plus countries. What can you tell us about entrepreneurs? Because I think everybody's got their own types of entrepreneurs and they have their own kind of a definition of entrepreneur, businessman. Uh, some people call them hustlers. Some people call them, you know, these are the great men, they're the elders, whatever they want to call it, the commerce, whatever you want to call them. What can you tell us about entrepreneurs? Okay, so I'm an entrepreneur myself. I have been for a very long time. You know, I think it's really, really interesting what's happening in the world with coronavirus right now. Because I think that you'll get a lot of people now who are so used to having to go to a nine to five and now have been abandoned by a company that they thought was very safe. You know, they thought, okay, I do my nine to five, I get my paycheck, I'm set. But these people have been dumped, like lots of them, you know. So I think that a lot of people will now be going into entrepreneurship. And if not entrepreneurship where they're creating their own business, at least it'll be things like coaching and consulting, which can all be done online. There'll be a lot of things like um, remote workers. So if you have a job that you normally do at an office, being able to do it from home. Um, freelance work is, was already massively popular before this. Now you put in the coronavirus and it's like, it's just put this on steroids. And I don't think that it's a big leap in people's heads to go, all right, you know, I could do this from my uh, one bedroom or my bachelor pad in New York, or I could be on the beaches in Sri Lanka and, you know, my dollar goes 10 times as far uh, and work from there or travel and backpack through Southeast Asia at one quarter of the price, you know, and experience all the beautiful things this world has to offer. So I think that we'll see a massive shift after this coronavirus, after the quarantine stops, where a lot of people make this jump into entrepreneurship. And really, like, entrepreneurship is my life. Like, this is what I breathe, like, I, I'm so obsessed with it. You know, there's a couple of guiding forces in my life, travel being one of them, entrepreneurship, you know, so self-responsibility, libertarianism, you know, not harming others and trying to provide to the world valuable services. You know, these are the deciding factors that have shaped me into the person that I am today. No, definitely I mean? entrepreneurship is a, is a way of life. And, and I think with the technology that we have right now, it's empowering people to do that more. And this is why is is so exciting uh, about this whole entire COVID-19 is that one side of it is going to change our healthcare. It's going to change a lot of industry, a lot of businesses. It's going to put a lot of businesses out of business and they need That's to right. rethink their strategies. It's also going to create a lot. I mean, uh, people are that, that, you know, I had difficulty a year ago, teach them how to do Zoom, all of these different things. Now, by force of nature or whatever you want to call it, now they got to get into uh, Zoom. Now they got to learn all that. So to me, it's, it's a good thing, but it's also going to, I mean, as a human race, I think this is going to go down in the history as one of the biggest pandemics that we possibly could have had, especially with the technology we got in the medicine yet. But here's my other question. If there is somebody starting, let's say there were 20 and you started your whole entire journey of traveling 20. At 20, what recommendation do you have for them? And they want to be an entrepreneur, but have that balance, if you want to call it, in, in, in business and fun and hobby. And I know it's hard to create that balance, but we're striving to create that. What are some of the recommendations you will have for people? Okay, well, let's start off from the travel side, because I think this is an important part. Because I, I think that a lot of people, you know, have something in their brain already. I'll be honest with you. I believe that everybody on planet Earth I'll make this statement. I believe that everybody on planet Earth has a place in their head that they want to go to, that they want to visit, that they've been dreaming about, not for like a week or a month, but years, maybe decades, maybe 20, 30 years that they've wanted to go to. You know, they want to go and explore. Now, whether you have told your friends or your parents or your spouse or your brothers or sisters or anybody about it, 
I have no idea. But I bet you that in your head is that seed of somewhere that you want to go. Now, do you want to live there full time as an expat like I do? Do you want to build your entire life around travel? I have no idea. But I bet that one place is there. So my invitation to you would be just try it. Honestly, we have no idea how long we're going to be on planet Earth. And we don't know if there is anything after this life. So go out there and try to make your dreams come true right now. Now, the best way to do that is entrepreneurship. Any type of remote working where you can generate income while you're overseas, while you're abroad, is going to elongate the amount of time that you can spend overseas and the quality of your life that you can have when you're abroad. Now, entrepreneurship itself is, it is challenging. You know, I probably spent, I spend on average probably 35, 40, $50,000 a year on attending mastermind programs, different coaching and consulting, online training, you know, and for me, that's an investment in myself. Yes, I have apartments. Yes, I have bonds. Yes, I have gold and silver. Yes, I have stocks and all these other types of investments, but you have to understand the thing that is going to make you the most money is with your own hands. You understand? That's where you're going to be able to generate the greatest return. So if you invest in yourself, that is going to pay the biggest dividends. So I definitely invite people to do a little bit of soul searching. Think about maybe where they want to go. Then start taking the little bit of money they have and putting a portion of it back into themselves. There's some fantastic free programs out there. There's even better paid programs out there. I personally prefer paying for information and I can give you a couple examples why. Um, if I just start going for free information, like start YouTubing stuff, the next thing I know it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting there in my underwear eating peanut butter straight out of the jar, you know, <laughs> reading about how to build a nuclear reactor in your garage. And it's like, well, how the hell did I get here? No, you need to go from A to B to C to Z and all the way through. That's how you I learn. I feel like you're calling me out. I feel like you're calling me out. It's cool. It's all, I won't take There's your question. Water. It's how you're calling me out. <laughs> but I've been there. Uh, sometimes it's shiny object sometimes, syndrome, you know, shiny some, object syndrome. Yes. Yeah, we always want to see something. Oh, this is interesting. This is neat. I, I, well, here, here's the strategy that I have implemented. I want to say that I've implemented this in the past two years. I would say two years. Before that, I, I was just just exactly what you said. So now what I do is I find out what subject and topic I want to learn and I hone yep. into it and I don't go based on what YouTube tries to recommend to me. I retune, refine my search and I go based on what I need. And I know that shiny object is very difficult, is very tempting to avoid a lot of times when you get on YouTube and free content, but I try to stick through it. And then after yep. watching 10, 20, 30 videos, of understanding what that industry is all about or what that topic is all about, then I'm going to go seek out gurus on IG, on YouTube, and then get get a little bit more detail. And if they got a mastermind group course, all of that, but it's got to make sense. Because to me, it's like... And you'll always identify you with certain people. Mean is that. Yeah, exactly. You know, you'll always identify with certain people. And, you know, who I think is a great guru, who I like to learn from, might not speak to you. Maybe you don't like them at all. So I think that a lot of these things are very personal. Um, I work in the offshore market, so I work with second passport, second residency, um, offshore banking, offshore incorporation, international real estate, gold and silver. This is kind of my niche, the offshore expat market. So my main mentors are not guys you're going to find on Instagram. They're not guys you're going to find on YouTube. These are lawyers who have 35 years in the industry, who own their own firms, you know, these are the type of guys that I work with. Um, you know, one of my main mentors is the ambassador uh, to Austria, you know. So I learned from someone like that who understands these types of things. I speak with him every week on the phone. He teaches me, like, okay, these are the results he got. This is his advice. And then I go back to my desk and I put these types of things in practice, you know, and then I get the same results. Magic, right? You know, find someone who's actually done what you want to do, emulate their... Uh, their process and get similar or same results. That is that that, 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 is, that, that is awesome. That I mean, it, it makes sense totally. The reason for that is because I think you gotta. I, I think it's part of self development. I think you gotta want to go learn. You know, it's it's always important for people to learn 
and be able to seek out that information. So I think that's, I think that's one of the characteristics for entrepreneur. You want to seek out help. You want to seek out knowledge, observe it, and then see what you can do with it. So I agree with that 100%. Who resonates with you and resonates with me, or the topic? You know, it's way yeah, more sensitive. You definitely want to go higher up and find a way better expert who's been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, that wisdom is priceless. Now, okay, well, I'll give you an example. So, say as an entrepreneur, you're struggling with something. You've got a problem in your business, and you know, you could spend an hour, a day, a week, a month, two months, six months trying to figure out a solution to this problem, you know, every night, two hours, blogs, free blogs, free YouTube, you know, trying to figure out, well, how the hell do I do this? How do I tweak this? How do I make the people understand this piece of copy or do this one little thing? Or you go to a mentor or a coach or a consultant and you pay them the thousand dollars or $2,000 for their time and you get it done in like five minutes and then you move on and now you got a new problem and you fix that. And the faster that you can move through these problems and fix these problems, the faster along you're going to be. Now, there is an opportunity cost to your time. You can't do any, you can't do everything, you know? So if it takes you, let's say a month to solve a problem, let, let's take two examples. It takes you one month to solve a problem. It takes me five minutes to solve a problem because I have people who have already been through it and I turn to them for help, okay? Now, another problem and another problem and another problem. These types of things start to compound, you know, suddenly I'm, I might only be one year ahead in time, but my business is 10 years ahead. Who's going to have the first mover advantage in your business now? Like these are important things to understand, but people, you know, they got it in their head. Internet equals free. You know, why should I pay for these types of courses? You know, I, I pay a thousand dollars an hour for his time. No, you pay a thousand dollars for the 30 years that he did learning this before. That's an excellent deal. That is an unbelievable deal. I'll take that's, that deal that's, all day long. That's almost highway robbery. You're you're robbing thirty yeah, exactly. thousand dollars. But I mean, but I also know that it must be the right guru, right coach, right mentor. So they gotta know their stuff. I totally agree with that because Yeah, there's a lot of fake people gonna, out there. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you gotta, like, don't get you, me you wrong. People... I, I'm totally up for it. Totally up for it. Because if you could do it. Even if you had to go work minimum wage, make a thousand dollars and pay for it and be ahead a month or two, that's still being ahead a month or two. And yep. now you network with somebody else who's on your team. They may not be oh, on your absolutely. team twenty four seven, but they're, they they got your back. So that that's invaluable for any business. I mean, totally, you should never do. But that doesn't yeah, mean have, you can't. I have go previous forward. clients of mine. Like my my main business is not coaching and coaching and consulting. I do it on the side for a little bit of fun and to help people out. But I've had people who have stayed with me for six months, got what they needed, moved on to the next person. But if they email me again in four months with a short question, absolutely, I'm going to answer them. You know, This person actually showed me respect by paying for my time. So of course, I'm going to be very generous with it. Now, someone cold emails me out of nowhere wanting to pick my brain about something. You know, It's just not a good use of my time. You know, My newsletter, I get, I don't know, 180, 200,000 people a month who read my articles and listen to my podcast. Is it worth watching every single one of them? No, that's not scalable. You know, I'm going to try to use that time to help as many people as possible. But if someone has shown me respect and paid for my time, you know, I don't mind paying it back a little bit uh, extra outside of the agreement. And I think that a lot of my mentors over the years have done the same for me. You know, I was in masterminds that were maybe $15,000. And then two years later, I know that this is the perfect question for this person who can help me, or I need someone in their network. Yeah, I reach out to them. And you know what? They get back to me like this so fast, you know? So pay to play is important. And I know this might sound a little bit self-serving, but really it is the secret to success. It is a noisy world out there and money cuts through all of it. I promise you pay to play you get a lot further, a lot faster. I agree with that. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. Hopefully, we can do a couple of more videos because there are a few topics My that pleasure. we really need to spend more time on it. But I also know that you're a busy man, so we'll coordinate. My team, your team, will coordinate. Let's see what we can do. And if there's anything that you need, 
from us and our team we're definitely here we love to support all the entrepreneurs and business owners especially people like yourself so we're here to help thank you so much for being here today thanks very much you got to stay safe bye 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 bye